Okay, this is uh, the factoring video for pre-calculus, chapter P, lesson 5, and I'm not going to go through all the scenarios of factoring in this video. I'm just going to cover one, uh, but just a reminder, some ones that uh, you should know how to do. The difference of two squares, you should know how to factor that one. Uh, how to identify a perfect square, and how does that factor. How to factor one where the leading coefficient of well, the coefficient of the first term is a 1. Those are pretty easy. Uh, what I want to cover is the ones that's a little bit more difficult, and this is when the first number or the leading coefficient is not a 1. It's something other than 1, usually a 2 or 3 or something like that. Now, the steps that I'm about to show you will work for factoring any of those other ones that I just talked about, but it's the longest way to do it. Uh, it will work with any, but it's the longest. If you recognize those other scenarios, difference of two squares, perfect squares, and you recognize the pattern, you can factor those very quickly. If you don't, you can still use this method. So this method works for everything, and hopefully you remember it when I go through it. So what I want to do is very quickly give you the first the steps involved, and then we'll go through the steps one by one and do an example for you, and then maybe one more depending on the length of the video. Or maybe I'll put those in another, another video, so if you wanted to watch it, you can. Okay, so factoring. The first thing you have to do is multiply the A and the C. Now, if you're not sure, you don't remember what the A and the C is, you don't know what he's talking about. What we're talking about is, remember, the standard form of a quadratic is AX squared plus BX plus C. So when I say multiply A times C, what I'm talking about is this A right here multiplied by this C right here. And that's going to give you a number, A times C. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step then is to then to determine the factors of that AC. So let me kind of write it out here in uh, variables. You multiply A times C, and so you get this number AC. Then you want to make a little table like this, and then you want to look for factors of A times C. Numbers that you can multiply together and get uh, whoops, and get AC. Okay, so I multiply these two together and I get AC. And then I can multiply these two to numbers and I can get AC. Multiply these two numbers and I get AC. So the two numbers here that you multiply together have to give you that number that you got when you multiplied those. Once you've done that, what you're looking for is you're looking for these numbers here that when you multiply together to get this, when you add them together, you get b. So this number plus this number gives you b. Or this number plus this number gives you the b. Or this number plus this number. Only one of these will do it. Okay, Only one of them will multiply together and give you this. And then adding those same two to numbers together will give you b. So you want to figure out which one works for that. Then you want to rewrite this expression up here. You're going to rewrite this ax squared plus bx plus c. And instead of using bx, you're not going to use bx. You're going to use these two numbers here that you got that added together to get b. And again, this may be confusing, but you'll see when we do an example. Once you've rewritten it, then you're going to take the two first two terms of that new expression and factor those. Then you're going to group the second two terms and factor those. And then you're going to, uh, what should happen when you do that is you're going to get a binomial or a parentheses, two parentheses, and what's inside should be exactly the same. And if that's happened, then you've done it correctly, then you can use the distributive property to find out what the factored form is, okay? So those are the steps. I'm like going to do an example now, and we'll use those steps. So first thing, multiply A times C. So what is A here? It's 3, and B, or C, excuse me, is 5. So A times C is and maybe I'll do it right here, 15. Okay, so A times C is 15. Next, I want some factors that multiply together, give me 15. So uh, 3 times 5 is 15, and that's about it. And 1 times 15 is 15. Okay, so those are the factors that would give me this, all right? Now, I need to take either this pair or this pair and see if I can make them add up to negative 16. Well, this is a negative, and I don't have any negatives here, so I'm going to have to put some negatives in here. But again, 
I have to get a positive 15 when I multiply them, so the two numbers together have to both be negative, because that's the only way to get a positive 15. So if I had a negative 5 times a negative 3, that would give me positive 15, but negative 3 plus negative 5 is not negative 16. If I did negative 1 and negative 15, negative 1 times negative 15 is positive 15, negative 1 plus negative 15 is negative 16, so these are the two numbers that I want to use. So I'm going to use these two numbers here. Their product is this, 15, and their sum is this, negative 16. Then it says to rewrite this expression using these numbers instead of the negative 16. So I'm going to use 3x squared, and I'm not going to use negative 16. I'm going to use negative 1x and negative 15x, because you'll notice that these two numbers added together still equal negative 16x, so I haven't changed anything, plus 5. So I rewrote this using these numbers that I determined would give me this product. Then we want to take the first two terms. I just want to look at these two terms right here. So let's look at these close, and I want to factor. What's common between these? Well, I can factor out and x. Okay? And if I factor out x, that leaves me 3x minus 1. Okay? So then I want to factor the second two. So now I want to look at just these two and factor those. And this sign always stays the same. So this is going to be minus. What are some factors of 15 and 5? Well, that's going to be 5. So this is going to be 3x and this has got to be careful here. This is going to be minus 1. Why is that minus 1? Because when I distribute this negative 5 times this negative 1, I have to get positive 5. So both of these have to be negative. So be careful when this is a negative because it's going to change the sign of this inside. Okay. Now, as I look at this, the two binomials, these two things in parentheses, you'll notice are identical. That's what I want. If those are not identical, I've made a mistake. And most normally, uh, most of the times it's going to be right here where this negative sign and this one is, uh, you didn't change this one. So because those are both the same, then what I can do is distributive property in reverse, which means basically I take the 3x minus 1, which is common to both, I take that out. Essentially, this is kind of what I'm doing. I take it out of that term, and I take it out of that. So now what's left? x minus 5, so my x minus 5 is my other binomial, so there's my factored form. Okay, so there's my factored form using the distributive property in reverse. So this is the factored form of this. So those are the steps you would follow, and again, you want to use that when this first uh, number here is not a 1, uh, then you can use this method. Okay, uh, I will do an example, I'll do two or three videos on another example, so if you want to check that out, Go ahead and check that out, but I hope that was helpful.